Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! Hello, everybody. Welcome back again to another episode of Dr. Movie, your favorite show that's normally on wheels, but not currently because, again, vacation time. I get to do this in the luxury of my home, which doesn't happen very often. But anyways, welcome back to the show. We're in the middle of this Demon's Dilemma where we've reached Demon's 3 and we've got three different movies. Claiming to be Demons 3. So uh, we've done the first two, which is Black Demons. There was also The Ogre that we talked about. And then there's this one. Um, I think the working title of this one was going to be Demons 3. But they obviously changed it to The Church. But uh, I find it interesting that this one is probably more like a demon movie than the other ones. Uh, one case being that, well, uh, Dario Argento was involved with, you know, the, the creation of this one. And uh, so that, that gives you some credibility to a certain degree. And it actually does, you know, have some demonic stuff in it. So let's talk about The Church from 1989. Uh, it is a straight up Italian horror flick, which is, you know, that's my bag, people. That's my bag. And um, it's got a 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb. IMDb, make sure I say that right. I always try to get those two letters mixed up at the end. But yeah, uh, that's that's probably about right. Let's do a synopsis here. It says, an old Gothic, <laughs> an old Gothic cathedral built over a mass grave. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Develop strange powers and traps a number of people inside with ghosts from the 12th century uh, massacre who are seeking to resurrect an ancient demon from the bowels of the earth. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a pretty decent description. Uh, directed by Mikhail Sove. So we've talked about stage fright on here. Uh, you've heard his name brought up on several Italian horror flicks. Matter of fact, he's even in... Demons 1. Uh, I don't think he's in 2. Could be wrong. If it is, it's always like a cameo thing. He's not ever a, a main character. Um, but he's well known in, in, in this world. Matter of fact, he's an understudy of Argento. What explains a lot. And uh, wow. I, I, I've talked about Mikhail on several different podcasts. And we always talk about... Uh, he only made a handful of movies... And they're quite brilliant. He really has a style that is equal, if not better, to some of the greats. And it's a shame that he just kind of disappeared and stopped doing it altogether. And this movie is no different. This movie is shot is exceptionally well, has a great look to it. And uh, we'll get more into that as we go along. But yeah, The Church. I've actually got uh, this on DVD. I'm actually staring at it in my collection here. Uh, so it's one of those that, as soon as I heard about it, I had to pick it up and check it out because I knew Argento was involved. I knew it was Suave. I'm all in, right? Uh, the thing about, again, Argento and Suave both is you get a bit more artistic flair with those guys than you do, say, a Fulci or... Uh, even even Lamberto Bava. Bava's uh, fantastic, but he's more um, in your face, right? I put him in more of a category of almost... I almost put uh, Lamberto... Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he's John Carpenter by any means, but, well, I, actually, I put him more with like a Wes Craven. I think that's more where he, he belongs as far as his style. And whereas, you know, the other two that I'm talking about... They've got a lot more flair, right? A lot more artistic choices that they make with some of the camera shots and just the way things are, are put on screen. Um, as far as a cast, 
Not going to get too deep. I know that uh, Mikhail Sove is a police officer. He's always going to make some sort of you know cameo of some sort. We have a very, very young Aja Argento in this. So, you know, it's coming out of being in Demons 2. Why wouldn't you call this Demons 3? And this may be Argento's plan, right, to kind of continue that on. And, hey, you remember her in this one. You yeah, Here she is in this one, right? Um. Who else we got here? Um, Barbara Kubisti, which was also in Stage Fright that we talked about. We've got uh, Thomas Arana in this, who is also in the next movie that we're going to follow up with. That's considered, at the time, Demons 4. Not to give any spoilers away there. <laughs> um, and we do have our favorite, Giovanni Lamberto Radis is in this, um, playing a priest. Uh, it's kind of funny because of all the characters that he plays, you know, being a priest, that's a, that's a stretch. <laughs> There's also other familiar faces in this, but, uh, for the most part, that kind of covers the, the basis of what we're looking at here. Yeah, this starts off back in the, the Crusades time, right? And you've got this group, um, gosh, I can't even remember what they were called. They had a specific title of these type of, of, uh, Soldiers, I guess you'd say, from the Crusades. And they're led to this area, and there's a, a young lady there that has this mark that this, this guy leads them to, and and uh, they kill her, right? And they end up, because of her having this mark, which is basically a cross on the, 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 the ball of her foot underneath, they end up just killing the whole community there, right? And... They're kind of led by this guy that, the guy that leads them there. You can tell he's kind of a crooked dude anyways. But they end up using him to go around, and he's just convicting people left and right, right? Again, the Crusades were, were a, a nasty time, right? No matter what side of the fence that you're on. Um, but, you know, in this case, they wipe out the whole village, and they bury the whole town. All the people, not the town. They bury all the people in the town. Just make, make a gra ma mass grave. Throw everybody in it. And uh, they fill it in. And to to keep the evil at its core, they decide to try to sanctify the land and build a church on top of it so the evil will be locked forever. That's just basically what the synopsis said, right? And then out of that, it flashes forward to modern time. And there's this, you know, real ancient cathedral... Uh, massive church that's built on this location now, right in the middle of a famous town, and um, we get a, a a young man coming in there. That's the new librarian. He gets hired, and there's a lady there. It's kind of an architect that's looking at a lot of the artwork and like trying to uh, um, do some restoration to some of it and stuff. Well, those two uh, hit it off and start getting hot and heavy. And uh, on the side note, you've got Aja Argento running around, who is uh, um, finding ways that she finds a pathway that's under the church that that she can go to and kind of sneak out and go to another area, which leads to you know a lot of stuff happens later on in the movie. But uh, as things go on, uh, they find this document that talks about what's underneath the church, right? So uh, our librarian gets this thing that he that he figures out. He he figures out how to read it because it's in Latin, but there's also a trick to it. It's a it's a op optical illusion kind of thing. And he figures it out and he says it says he has to look for the stone with seven eyes. So uh, that becomes pretty apparent <laughs> as this movie goes on. And when he when he opens it up, bad things start happening. Right. And the other thing too is this church is. It's kind of a kind of a it's it's rigged, right? It's it's triggered to if 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 a certain thing happens, right? It's almost like it was foreseen that they can't keep this evil locked in forever. That eventually, when it does, this this whole structure is is rigged up to completely implode on itself. So, in other words, to trap all the evil inside and to kill them all and not let it get out to the outside world. Very similar to 
you know, the idea of what happens in the first two Demons movies, right? If we contain it, we can keep it from getting to the rest of the world. And that's always the chance you take, right? So, again, I can see why this was looked at as, as Demons 3. Um, there's... This movie takes a long time to get going. I, I think they spend a lot of time on character development that you're just kind of like, yeah, you know, this is kind of dragging out. Now, when it starts hitting, the last, I don't know, 15 minutes of this, the third act or whatever, um, it starts hitting pretty hard. And, you know, if it weren't for kind of the turnaround there, you're kind of going, man, this is just kind of a long, drawn-out thing. But it does kind of kick into gear. There is a lot of mystery going on because you're trying to solve this thing of what's actually going on, especially from a modern time looking back into the past and trying to figure out what happened. And uh, these people figure that as they go along. And it, uh, it just so happens that there's a lot going on at the church that the day everything, when the, when the crap hits the fan, right? You got a photography company there that's taking pictures of these people that are dressed up. I guess it's supposed to be a marriage, but it looks like it's just a photo shoot type of thing and they're dressed up in wedding garb and they want to go inside the chapel and have some pictures made you've got scaffolding everywhere where they're doing all this you know retouching up of, of the old artifacts uh, you've got a group of kids that are there on a tour just to check it out well lo and behold uh, something happens and the doors close and they get locked in and there's no way out um, also our main character um, the the librarian when he when he pulls up that stone I was about with the seven eyes he gets possessed uh, but he still looks like himself right so uh, but it it gives him the urge to not do good things right and there's some really creepy things that happen in this but um, the problem is is this kind of it kind of spreads just like any other demons movies right where if you scratch somebody else. They they kind of carry it with them, and they, it gives them the urge to uh, be a baddie, right? So you kind of got that story building on. When you take the... It's basically taking the idea of what happens in, in the first Demons movie, but you're doing a lot of this religious uh, artwork, religious uh, effects. There's some sceneries in, in this that you're just like, holy smokes. And again, it's that artistic flair that Suave has that uh, it reminds me of more of an exorcist slash Rosemary's Baby type thing. Um, a lot of the, the Catholic imagery, right? Uh, there's one scene in particular where this, this guy turns a corner and he sees his girlfriend or wife and she's naked and she's got a like a boa constrictor wrapped around her leg and she's going into the arms of this demon. And he's standing there and his wings go around her and like, you know, cover her and, and take her with him. And they they disappear around the corner. And when he goes there, his girlfriend's just standing there going, where have you been? Right. So you get a lot of that kind of stuff going on. There is a straight, um, I want to say Rosemary's Baby, almost midsummer idea here, too, with uh, this uh, this this sex scene where, again, the the the. Uh, the woman there that's the architect that's trying to do the refinishing of stuff. And like I said, her and, and this librarian are hitting it off, <laughs> to put it nicely. Um, he turns into this uh, this creature that she foresees early on as well. Uh, and they consummate on a stone in the middle of this church underground. That is, I guess, I, there's no explanation of why. Does this, you know, does this seal the deal with, with all the uh, the the demons coming back? I, I don't know. There's no real explanation, but it's very much a Rosemary's Baby scene where she's with her husband and she looks up and she sees a different set of eyes looking back at her. You kind of get that here. This thing looks pretty awesome, except for the teeth. Uh, it's very goat-like, but to me, the the teeth just kind of take me out of it. But the rest of it looks pretty dang awesome. Uh, but there's a group of people around, and they're chanting all this stuff, very Midsummer-like, right? So you kind of get all those elements put in there together. And uh, um, you get, uh, there's this this older couple that's there. And I haven't done enough research on this, but the, the couple, uh, the guy that's in it, 
It seems like he was in one of these other movies, one of the Demons movies. I want to say it's almost like the husband that takes his wife out on, to, to see the movie. I, but I'm probably wrong. But it's got that same kind of feel. They're an older couple. They're looking at the church. They're going around. And uh, there's a scene where they go up to the belfry in the building trying to find a way out. And lo and behold, the wife is evil. And the next thing you know, the bell start ringing. And when it shows her, she's got her husband's head, which he's pulled off his body and is ringing the bell with his head. That's the kind of movie you got here, folks. So uh, I'm not going to give much more away uh, because it, it's a pretty solid flick. Like I said, it takes it, you know, the, the first hour, you're just like, is this thing going to kick into gear? And it finally does. But it's a it's a really good film. So um, I recommend it. I think it's closer to a Demons movie than any of the other ones that we see, Demons 3. And uh, like I said, we're going to follow this one up with what they consider to be Part 4, and uh, which I believe Sauve directed as well. So, Suave. Rico Suave. You know, that guy. Um, so there you go, folks. That's my take on The Church from 1989. I'm going to give this a... I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Just because it's kind of it's kind of pulled back a bit. Like I said, the 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 last you know twenty minutes of it is totally worth watching it for. It just seems like it takes a long time to get there. But as far as the cinematography and everything, top notch. The music is a collaboration of Keith Emerson stuff and uh, Goblin, so you can't go wrong there. So you can tell Argento's got his hands all in this one, right? And that's always a good thing. All right, folks, that's it for this one. We will. See you on the flip side. Dr. Boobie!